Definitely a nice rig you got going. Thank you. How you doing, Joe? Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, Steve. All right, guys, so this is uh, Steve Douglas's boat. We're going to do a little bit of a session today out in the river, Nickajack Lake, Tennessee River. We are below, uh, we're right near Raccoon Mountain, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Steve is from Kentucky. He's known as the Catfish Dude. Uh, is it Wild TV Catters? Wild Catters TV. Wild Catters TV. And uh, he's fishing in the Scenic City area. This is uh, kind of where I'm from, and so we're going to have a great time. Uh, we're in Raccoon Mountain right now. So hopefully we can get a good fish or two on this evening bite. Let's see what we can get. Steve has a kitten. Steve, what's the kitten's name? Monkey. Monkey? Lisa named it Monkey. <laughs> it's awesome. When I find a place that I like to fish, I'll go up above it and then I'll mark about every 100 feet, I'll mark a waypoint. And that way when I go back above again, I come down and kind of connect the dots and that keeps me on in the, the strike zone, I guess I want to say. Awesome. Alright, now let's just go up above and throw some baits and we're going to drift this way. I always like to drift with the current too. Sometimes you drift when there's no current at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we got just a little tiny bit today, so I'm going to keep going with the current. It's just a mind thing for me. It may not matter at all, but it's just... So what you've done is you've created a path, exactly. essentially, right? Okay. And now it's easier to follow. And if we just was to start, you know, I may veer over like to see we come up here in real shallow water. Mm -hmm. But now I've marked it, so we, we'll stay in that consistent 55, 60 foot. Range. All right, guys. So we're going to do some drift fishing. Are we doing suspend or suspend, drift. suspend drifting? Now, Steve, how far above the ground does the bait have to be if you're suspend drifting? Would you say? I like three or four cranks. Three or four cranks? maybe three to five foot. Three to five foot. Alright All right, guys, we'll get to it. So drifting with uh, eight ounce, yep. no roll sinkers. Yeah, it just it keeps the bait down, down where you want it and you have more control over it that way. It's awesome. That way if you're going a little fast, you know, if we put these three ounces on there, if we was going a little fast, it would just kind of float up into the no, I understand. The line there. All right, Steve, I've seen this before where you cut out the uh, gut pocket. Can you explain why that's important? And because, uh, I mean, usually for me, I just, you, I usually just use chunks. But what's the importance of cutting out the gut pocket? I just think the, the bait flows through the water a little bit better. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, and I'll show you why. And show us how you do that. Well, I just cut it just like that. I don't like my lines twisting and stuff, but if you cut it the other way, and I'll show you for your your folks. If we just cut it just like that, we're mm -hmm. gonna throw it out there. And now what's gonna happen, all this stuff's just gonna fall out. Just gotcha. Like there. Right. That cavity is going to catch water and start spinning if you're you know moving any kind of right, current right, or anything right. so that's why i like to just cut that off eliminate that interesting completely that's a new thing i've learned there and i always like to throw my baits out to pull them and it's kind of let it sink like that if you don't if you just drop it straight down like this it's gonna go down there and spin gotcha and tangle it's like this kind of pitch them out and then just ride them down i'm marking some good fish on the sonar right there yep. and the rods are out in the water hoping for a good bite all right guys we're getting a bite on this one yeah he's a little one 
He's a little one. This is how we get it done with uh, Steve Douglas. <laughs> Wildcatters TV, right? Did I say that right? Gets the little ones. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fish. That'll work, I guess. That'll work. Slime lovers, that's for sure. Oh, I get a... oh Steve, whoa. Go. Got one? Oh, yeah. Wait. Yeah, this one definitely is a... A little better? Yeah. Shaking a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, you blowing in bubbles too. You want to do the honors of getting him in, or? Yeah, go ahead and uh, let him blow them bubbles there. All right. I, mean, I guess you're aware of that. Aren't you? Yeah. You water too fast, they, uh, they, you gotta let them decompress a little bit. Is he hooked, dude? I think so. Yeah, uh, corner of the mouth. Yep. Now, Steve, talk about the importance of decompression, if you could. Well, when you pull them up out of the water real fast, uh, I really don't know what happens. Some kind of chemical reaction in their belly. Uh, it just, it bloats them. And if you, you kind of let them thrash around a little bit, they release that pressure. Right. And they'll be able to go back down into the depths. Right now, if we were to release him, he would just float and couldn't get back down right. and totally die. Yeah, it's kind of like the wind getting knocked out of you, in a way. Um, definitely important to do, for sure. Why don't you try my new net? Yeah, the Hydro Web. All right. Pull it back straight out. There you go, one-handed. Got him. Got him. Alrighty, maybe 15, well. Yeah, not bad. That's yeah, a decent fish. Yeah. Guess we'll go ahead and release them. Yeah. All that motor. Oh, He's feeling a little bit better, ain't he? Yeah. Lisa, you wanna come over here? Ah. Well, ain't about the same. Probably the same. Nah, it's a little bit bigger. Ain't it? <laughs> about the same fish. <laughs> That's a little bigger, I'd say. He has a uh, bluegill or bass or something. Or a bass or something. Look at that, guys. That's awesome. All righty. All right. Let's go ahead and release them. Yeah. Sometimes you wonder why he even ate that bait. Tell us, fish. Steve, the the difference, like with this one, like this one, and then this one, or are they all kind of? They're all going to do the same thing. You know, all the pressures on, you know, small area right here. Right. Go to where this, there's a lot of pressure, and it's not going to damage your cork. Gotcha. At least he's getting that. Oh. Uh, he's moving a little too much. It's all right, though. We are suspend drifting, and this is uh, one of Steve Douglas's main techniques on catching a blue catfish on the Tennessee River. We are fishing uh, near Raccoon Mountain, uh, Nickajack Lake. So, and then, uh, this is what we're getting. Oh yeah, he's pretty nice, ain't he? There's my grippers. What kind of hooks do you use, Steve? Mustads. Mustad. Good solid fish. I mean, if I was in a tournament, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at these. This is the one you want to take home and fry. <laughs>
the catfish do covering new ground or new water it's a good feeling isn't it when you catch when you uh, catch fish and well it makes you productive or makes you feel like you accomplished something i guess that's pretty little fish now because we're gonna put him back somebody might be able to catch him when he's 40 pounds All right, guys, we had a great time fishing with uh, Steve Douglas, the catfish dude, Wild Catters TV. Steve, I, I appreciate you taking me out. It was, it was an honor fishing with you, and I've watched your videos for quite some time now, and I appreciate the time. Uh, had you, fun. Yeah, definitely teaching me suspend drifting and everything. We got some good fish, and stay tuned for the next uh, Chat Hats fishing episode. See you guys.